peak shift in XRD occurs due to four reasons. Peak shift basically means this is the original peak here at original position 2 theta value. Sometimes the peak shifts toward the left and this is we call lower 2 theta because in XRD this is lower 2 theta and here it is greater 2 theta. Sometimes the peak shape toward the right and we call that the peak shape toward the greater 2 theta and towards the left we call the peak shifts toward the lower 2 theta. So the first reason is basically doping. When we perform doping uh, in a material, so we get peak shift here. The second important is the strain. When there are strains in a material, so we also get peak shift sometimes toward the left, sometimes toward the right. Annealing temperature factor is also playing very important role in the peak shift. The last one is the crystallite size. I will explain these four types in this video, but one thing is very important. In all these four cases, when you see that the interplanar spacing, this is basically D. This means that in solid we have atoms like this and there is another atom, atomic plane and the distance between these two planes are represented by interplanar spacing. This is the D value here. So in all these four cases, this D is changing. So once we have this D changing, it's not constant. So automatically it's changing the, uh, this angle, theta. And we know in Bragg's law, uh, the, 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 the XRD pattern, that the two theta is basically showing the peak positions. So when the theta is changing, this means the peak position is changing. Sometimes toward the left, sometimes toward the right. Because of this interplanar spacing. So once we have this D changing, in all these four uh, phenomena, so we get the peak shift. In this video, I'm going to explain all possible reasons for peak shift in XRD. There are two types of peak shifts. One is strong peak shift, another is slight peak shift. So if there is a strong peak shift, so these are not the reasons. The reasons are something else. For example, the calibration, the alignment, the sample displacement in the machines. So that is not our part. That is basically the operator, the technician part, right? But when there is a slight displacement of the peak from original positions, so these are the four factors which causes the peak shifts. The doping we, we, because of the stoichiometric composition changes at the latest strain, the macro strain causes the peak shift and this micro strain causes broadening. So we will not discuss this broadening, right? Similarly, thermal annealing also cause a uh, peak shift. Crystallite cells also cause peak broadening, but it also cause the peak shift. Now let's discuss the first cause of peak shift. That is basically doping. But I won't read this text for you. I will just put this in the description, but I will just explain from the figure. Is I explain that whenever we see that there is a change in interplanar spacings, so there will be clearly a shift in the peak. So our, our target is basically to looking for this D value. So doping basically means that when we bring foreign atom and it replace this host atom, so if the foreign atom is bigger in size, so it will create disturbance in the unit cell. It will expand the unit cell and let's suppose this is one plane and this is similar planar similar plane here and the distance between these two is basically interplanar spacing d so when we bring the uh, the bigger atom the different the bigger ionic radii so there will be expansion in the unit cell and because of that expansion this d is increasing here and Broglie's law says that the theta is decreases in the peak shift toward the left very simple and if we bring smaller uh, atom here, smaller atom and it replace this uh, atom here, so it will cause contraction. So if it, if it will cause contraction, it will make the D smaller and again it will make the theta bigger and the peak will shift towards the uh, right. This is basically called substitutional doping. Now if the atom is occupy these positions, these positions, right, so they also shift the peaks and they create something else. They, they, they change the crystal structure because 
you know th this is the unit cell so if we keep uh, all the places these atom are at the inter interstitial uh, positions so it will develop another crystal structure so interstitial doping also cause uh, some other changes in the material now if we if we increase this doping concentration if we increase so there might be some additional peaks in the uh, XRD pattern so this was how doping uh, uh, shaped the XRD peaks toward the lower theta 2 theta or toward the higher 2 theta the second important cause or reason for peak shift is let us strain strains are two types macro strain and micro strain we will only discuss macro strain because of macro strain there is a peak shift this is a common question researcher asks why XRD peak shift toward lower 2 theta angle so here peaks move basically moves mean there is a shift but no shape changes the shape remains same D is same throughout the material this does not mean that same D is increasing due to macro strain but there is a uniform strain uniform strain and because of that uniform the d is increases but the value is same for example if the original d naught is let's suppose uh, 0.5 angstrom so the 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 strain when there is a strain this d is almost is equal to 0.8 angstrom but so this 0.8 is same throughout the material so let me explain from the figure so look here when there is no strain in the material so the entral planar spacing is represented by d naught so we get this peak here but when there is a macro strain uniform strain so there is a tensile strain in the material so one stress is in this direction another is in this direction so because of that the entral planar spacing increases here you see so if you look this entral planar spacing and this one so this one is greater than the this d naught so we have greater entral planar spacing so if we have greater entral planar spacings so here this theta is decreases and this theta is nothing but this is basically the peak position look here this is the peak position the theta value is the peak position so we have larger entral planar spacing so the theta is smaller and the peak has to shift toward the left this is due to the macro strain the peak shift toward the left now the third factor which affect the peak position is the thermal annealing that is basically called temperature factor so I have to read this very important we know that the atoms are basically uh, changing its position at absolute zero temperature so this means that the atoms are changing its positions so now I have the clue that this interplanar spacing will change if the atom change its position but the amplitude of the vibration increases if we raise the temperature so the unit cell expand and we explain this if the unit cell expand so the d value is increasing so the peak has to shift right this is very very important and let me uh, discuss this here from this diagram for example if we have a unit cell here these are the atoms located here right and this the this, the distance between these two planes are d here so we we, we explain that at absolute zero these atoms are changing its positions at absolute zero temperature a room temperature not room absolute zero these atoms are changing its position but when we rise the temperature when we rise the temperature or when we increase the heat so these atoms start faster this means the amplitude is increasing and because of that an amplitude increase uh, the the unit cell ex start expanding and when the unit cell start expanding we have the greater d so we have the greater d Bragg's law is there <laughs> so we have smaller to theta or theta and the peak has to shift toward the left this is the the, the main cause of uh, temperature annealing on the peak shift the last factor which affect the xrd peak position is the crystallite size we know that there is a peak broadening with the crystallite size we know from Schirer formula but this is not our task because the peak broadening mean like this broad peak here right this Schirer formula if we have greater crystallite size so this pull with hop maxima will be smaller and we will have short peaks uh, or if we have smaller crystallite so we will have bigger uh, pull with hop maxima so there is a relation but we, we are not interested we are interested in peak shift and I have to read this when we decrease the crystallite size if we have a smaller crystallite size 
so the diffraction peak tends to shift toward the higher to theta this means that smaller crystallite will give us smaller entropy in the spacing and we know from Bragg's law that d is equal to lambda divided by 2 sine theta this means that if you have smaller entrepreneur spacing so we will have greater 2 theta you see here this means that this shift is attributed to world increased surface to volume ratio this we know that if we decrease the size we increase the surface to volume ratio in smaller crystallite and because of these uh, the atoms are more on the surfaces are near the surface so these atoms have different bonding environments as compared to the atoms or crystallite inside the bulk material and because of that they have different or modified d value and if we have modified our uh, change in d so we have peak shift this is a clear indication clear signal from Bragg's law that whenever you see that the d value is changing so the peak sh will shift either one side or another side